everybody want it to continue to be a show and not really show facts as it relates to what's really going on in our township. And here we go, another contentious night for Tiffany Henyard at the annual Thornton Township meeting. Henyard is township supervisor, but tonight she was challenged by board members and the public. She was booed loudly at several points during tonight's meeting. Henyard said it's not fair for residents to ask so many questions in the township when she says they don't ask them in other communities. This Tiffany Henyard thing is getting really crazy. So we, we found out that you know we're hearing that she was actually booed <laughs> at um the dalton township uh meeting you know she was called out you know she was saying that it was uh unfair for her to ask for her to have to answer questions so many different questions when you're not making the mayors of the other township answer questions well i would say tiffany they're not in battle and and brought in so many scandals like you are um they don't have a situation where you have a trustee that's uh mixed up in the essay allegations they don't uh, that there's not all this uh, 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 unaccountable funds. They're not bringing in Lori Lightfoot to come and investigate you. So th this thing, I, I, I'm really when I think about this woman, I'm 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 really thinking mental health. There's something going on. Uh, Trustee Holmes now. There's a lot of people coming out saying a lot of things about this guy Andrew Holmes. Man, one of these guys, uh, one person that's big on Facebook. Is a guy named Jedediah Brown. And he's been calling out Trustee Holmes and Tiffany Henyard for some time now. But he went to the Dalton Trustee uh, Township meeting. And let's check out what he had to say to Ms. Henyard. And also about, uh, also about Andrew Holmes. Check this out. I want you all to listen to me because I am going to use my words very specifically. I am not saying alleged. I am telling you all that I was directly told. Now, we limited the conversation because I do not want to become the witness in a um, in a in a in this particular type of case. But what we were told is that it appears that Andrew Holmes does has a liking for women. Now, we do understand that he has a Nick Sand, Nick Cannon uh, um, size amount of kids. Him and Nick Cannon is running neck and neck and making sure that the black population is consistently on the rise, whatever. But what we have also ascertained in our findings is that it also appears that Mr. Andrew Holmes has a liking for underage girls. And there may be a bit of grooming that have taken place. Now, what has happened or what we have been uh, able to understand from testimony, testimony, of individuals that we will not mention. I've talked to some parents. I've talked to the friends of parents and what it has or has been said and what has been alluded to and what we are now looking further into is that there are four, but out of four, two, uh, that, that, that we have, uh, literally got specific information about of individuals that are underage. Now, this is where the shit gets interesting and it takes a real interesting turn for me is because if he has had a consensual sexual relationship with underage girls that have been groomed, you got to deal with that, right? There's a level that you got to deal with that. So what they're saying is, anyway, these underage uh, accounts are saying that basically he may have been involved in a little bit of grooming. And one of the things that it appears that Andrew Holmes has uh, potentially done is he has taken these underage girls, which means y'all might have seen, listen to what I'm going to say out of my goddamn mouth. There may, there, it is alleged that's, that, uh, that some of these individuals, these underage girls, that he've had these relationships with, although consensual, he have taken them with him to crime scenes. What? So Andrew Holmes uh, potentially have brought underage female companions with him to crime scene. So now we get the, the, the national news coverage, the local, the national, international news coverage. Everybody's talking about Dalton. You have people driving in from all over the country just to uh, document what's going on in this in this uh, town, in this city. I mean, it's crazy. I, I people from Oklahoma, people from California, people coming in from everywhere to actually document what's happening here. Um, so now the news is actually, you know, they're detailing what's happening because she has two jobs uh, over over Thornton Township. And the, being the mayor of Dalton. 
So uh, a, a woman named Mary Avon, who was a police officer down there in Dalton for 25 years, she got up and she's speaking again. Let's let's listen to her speaking. Let's listen to what the news coverage is saying about what's happening down here in this township and also in Dalton. Check this out. My comment is it's public comment. <laughs> Grasping a gold microphone, Tiffany Henyard faced questions. She, for the most part, refused to answer. When you don't answer questions, yeah. there's something to hide. Yeah. Oh, no, Madam oh, Supervisor, oh. we are not brainwashed. We are fed up. Henyard is under siege in both of the public offices she holds, Thornton Township Supervisor and Dalton Mayor. The most recent controversy involves a taxpayer-funded trip to Las Vegas in which a Dalton trustee is accused of sexual misconduct against a village employee. The woman claims in a lawsuit she and a member of Henyard's security detail, who was also on the trip, faced retaliation after reporting it to Henyard. They claim she responded by saying if the information got out, Henyard would be ruined and all the work she had done would be lost. As a black woman, I want to see you protect black women. And I haven't seen that, Tiffany, since you've been in office, even in Dalton. And I understand, let's not talk about an investigation while I was pending, but it wasn't pending until it was exposed. And she had to do it herself because you betrayed her. WGN Investigates reported earlier this year, Henyard and her allies in the township racked up more than $67,000 on travel in a several-month period last year. Many of the flights were first class. So were the accommodations. Henyard has never fully explained the spending and continues to say she's the victim of vicious opponents and racism. We're here to help each other, not hurt each other. And it's a shame that us, us, I'm talking to my black and brown communities, will sit here. Henyard had several supporters in the crowd, including anti violence advocate Tio Hardiman, who offered himself up as a mediator. The baby has not been charged with anything. To be ready to show the baby away with the bath wash. We've learned federal investigators have been sniffing around the South Suburban government's Henyard runs for months. The Illinois Attorney General has also found Henyard staff is violating open records laws by refusing to turn over financial records requested by WGN Investigates and others. It's unclear whether further action by the state AG or the feds is imminent. And then we get back to Jedediah. Jedediah took to the microphone and he spoke at length to how he felt and how the citizens are feeling. And he laid, man, he laid Tiffany Henyard out. And he was, it was a lot of honesty. It was spoken in truth. He spoke about, well, you know what? I'm gonna let him speak first and then I'll come back and I'll give my closing uh, uh, comments. Just, just listen to what Brother Jedediah said. My name is Jedediah Brown and I'm homeless so I could be everywhere. So with that being said, to the young lady that was speaking, to the young lady that was speaking, I want her to know that as a man that's advocating, I heard everything she said. And I'm asking for everybody to be as gentle and kind to the employees who have inherited this mess. We are not trying to attack the employees, but if you be disrespectful, we'll match it. And then with that being said, I would like to also make it very clear, we're not here for you. But because you work in this government, understand people's lives are affected by this government. And just like I care about the young lady who spoke, I care about the young lady who made sexual assault allegations and who confided in the leader. And the leader who had a constitutional duty to report that to the local Las Vegas police, abdicated that duty so that she can sit there with nice hair and nice clothes and nice bottles of water. So if I'm going to protect one employee, I'm going to protect them all. But what I want to do here, because I don't live in this particular area of my homelessness, I want to say this to you, Tiffany. You had an opportunity as a black woman, as an elected official, to stand on the shoulders of so many of the most disrespected women in the history of this nation, to actually create something that would give generations behind you something that they can model after. However, this has been the Tiffany Inyard show. This, is, this place is completely, pla uh, uh, your face is everywhere. You also, I know you got those, those banners inside of the village that you didn't put up yet. You could go ahead and put them up. We know what you own, but this is the thing. The reason why people should never vote for anything 
with this administration without knowing the facts is because they got a whole history of trying to hide their corruption. Nobody, nobody in good government, not even, especially not a super mayor, especially not a black woman who understands the role that you have and understands that the history that you're creating, there's going to be another black woman that's going to run and she's going to be looked at through the lens of what you do in your governing. So when everybody say, oh, this is a black woman, I'm, we got to think about all black women. Because I know a lot of black women that's going to school right now, they aspire to be exactly where you were blessed. You were an illegitimate mayor. You were recalled by the people. However, you overcame it. That was God giving you an opportunity to make something of it and prove them wrong. But exactly what's happening, this is not people that's just disgruntled. But the Bible says that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And then Dr. Martin Luther King said that unrest is the voice, is the, is the, is the voice of the, those that have not been heard. So what you're dealing with is people trying to figure out how does a man that's homeless come to try to bring awareness to what's going on like a police officer. I have a video of one of your officers having sex in your jail cell. I'm trying to figure out how does a woman who you know have compromised sensitive investigative material, how do you have a woman who is unethical in every sense of the word, had an ir irresponsible relationship with your former chief's child, did it on company time in a company vehicle and left the village when she should have been there protecting her, the citizens, she was trying to get her rocks off. This is what I'm trying to figure out. How does that woman become internal affairs for your the police department and then I get served with a restraining order today from that woman and you allow her to be a police officer still in your department? With that being said, let me make it clear. If you unethical on one side, we got to watch you on another. So the way you lead as a, as a mayor is why we're handing you this way as a supervisor. And the best thing you can do with all the controversy is step aside and don't make these people have to go through another day because I'm going to tell you something. Yes, you're beautiful. And yes, you have done, a, you got, you, you got, you've done things that people have not done. But your presence is now a harm to these individuals. And then I'm going to ask you this one simple question. Because this is what I'm really here for, and I can say so much. Because I say you always give out receipts. I'm trying to figure out why not one time have you got on anything and spoke to that young woman who said that she was sexually assaulted. I have seen no empathy from you at not no time. You've not spoke about her. You said you're okay. You talked about what you are doing, but what about what she's been going through for the last year? And I understand, let's not talk about an investigation while it was pending, but it wasn't pending until it was exposed. And she had to do it herself because you betrayed her. So my question now to you is, now that the media have put out the name of the accused trustee, Andrew Holmes, who was the only trustee who has an office in your building, I'm asking you this question. Are you going to call for his resignation? Are you going to fight or get him removed from office? Are you going to cooperate with a fair and transparent thorough investigation into these sexual assault allegations? Are you going to apologize to that girl while you want us to be nice to this girl? And, that, and, and I'll leave you with this. This isn't personal for me. But I will be releasing everything that I have. And y'all can send every bit of piece of paperwork. You can weaponize your police department. And you can look at me all smug. But I'll tell you what I do know. Everybody has their day. And I'm not afraid. So Jedediah is here to stay. And as Jedediah told her, you call yourself the super mayor. And you're disrespectful to young girls. Because you're not, you're not exhibiting actual pro-social behavior within the society. Or a, a type of behavior that young girls should want to aspire to be. There's a young girl in college right now uh, trying to become the best version of herself. in the way you're carrying on. I mean, he just went in on this woman. And he said, the way that you carry yourself as the Dalton mayor is the way that we're going to treat you when you come into the township. Oh, man, he was, Brother Jada, Jada Dye was laying it out. And she, he's telling her that you've become an embarrassment, not to, your, not to just yourself, but to black women at large, because we get judged not by the individual, but judged by the whole. This is the way we get judged. And that, as a people, and this is why I said, and I've been saying that I, I, I was praying and hoping that this stuff wasn't true because I don't want this stigma on our people. And I want us to have the ability 
to fix our own problems. We don't need the W conservative or the W society coming in to do anything for us. We are capable of fixing ourselves, but we got to rid ourselves of the bad apples. We got to rid ourselves of people like Tiffany Henyard. Women like Tiffany Henyard and men like Andrew Holmes, they got to go. They have to be expelled from amongst us. Expelled from amongst us. Second Chronicles 16 says you must come out from amongst them and be separate. We got to separate ourselves from this, man. These people got to go. And we got to do things in decency and in order. In order to be the example uh, 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 that we want our children to be. We have to be the example that we expect the youth to be. And when she going around, she got billboards of herself all up over the city, but the whole city is in turmoil. What does that say about the character of a person? We got to do better. We have to do better as a people, man. And, and I'm confident, and I know that we can do better. I know that we have confident people, but we got to start to be, we have to start being the loudest people in the room. Not the underbelly of our class. People, people that don't deserve to be in the limelight. Because they're, they're not a good represent, represent, representatives of us as a group. And we gotta start, we gotta stop letting this stuff just be okay. But I'm gonna cut this video short here, man. Um, if you made it this far, hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to Street Media TV. Leave your comments in the comment section. If you made it this far, Hit the like button. Allow this, this information to go out to the algorithm, man. Um, I have a nonprofit, Urban Nerds Foundation. You guys can go to uh, Urban Nerds Worldwide. You can go to Urban Nerds Worldwide and you can um, subscribe to our, our, our nonprofit channel that we work with inner city youth here in the city of Philadelphia. And you can also donate through our, our website uh, at Urban Nerds Worldwide. We're a nonprofit, 501c3. A STEM organization that we're doing the work in the community. Um, again, remember, I love y'all. To the next time, peace. Remember, www.urbanners worldwide. And our YouTube, the other YouTube channel was Urban Nerds Worldwide. Remember, I love y'all. To the next time, peace.